My name is Céline Zé and uh, I come from Canada, but I have to specify that I come from Quebec because uh, Quebec is like a country within Canada. It's a French province. Um, I'm, um, I am an activist. I consider my, I, it's a label, I guess. Uh, I consider myself an activist and um, Muita gente. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, so I am both, uh, in English we say prosumer. So prosumer meaning I'm a professional, but also I'm also a consumer of uh, mental health services, or was mostly. Um, what I, well, hmm, I'm trying to see which angle. Okay, so I'll say how I came to GAM. Um, when I was uh, taking psychiatric medication at the beginning, at the first time that I was very not, uh, that I was not well, uh, the medication um, was not working for me, actually it was making me suffer even more. And uh, so it was a really a painful experience. And the only thing that they would offer to me, because I was in a lot of pain, was uh, psychiatric medication. And um, they didn't want to listen that um, the medication was not working for me and they could not suggest other alternatives. So here I am, I have a medication that's not working, that's making me worse with no other options. So I became worse and started to have really uh, suicidal ideas. And uh, fortunately, um, I, I started looking for a therapist. It took me a while to find a therapist because therapists, a lot of people are afraid of pain, of suffering. So it took me four or five attempts to find one. I did not try to see uh, a mental health professional in the system, psychiatric system, because I was afraid because I had suicidal ideas that they would um, put me in a psychiatric hospital. And for me, uh, being uh, in a room not able to escape was very traumatic for me. I need to be able to escape or not be enclosed. So this therapist, uh, she was able, she was able to hear me, uh, to hear my story without sending me um, to see a psychiatrist or telling me to take medication. So I, so I realized that it's possible if you, I think there's different ways of coping, but for me that was my way of coping. There's different ways, as I said. For some people, medication can work, but for me, it did not work. And the system does not offer many alternatives, especially when you have a lot of pain. So then, after I started to get better, I started to work in a crisis center, worked in the field of mental health. Um, I studied in social work. Um, so uh, I was working in a crisis center, different places, and and again, I was meeting people that were having problems, questioned with psychiatric medication, but they were not empowered. And often they felt they could not tell the doctor, the family, the psychiatrist that they didn't want to take them or that they wanted to take less. So I joined a group that's, that was uh, a committee from two organizations. Uh, one is the Coalition of Alternative Organizations in Mental Health in Quebec. And the other one is a, co is a coalition of rights groups. So together, uh, a committee was created, and the way we work in the alternative movement is to have users with, uh, not here you say professionals <laughs> in Brazil, but um, we, uh, at, at, my, at home we say workers. So we got together, created a safe space of open dialogue around medication. So everybody got to have their voice, and slowly but surely, that's how we invented GAM. So really to, and GAM uh, has been, it's been developed now for a good 20 years. And this is why I'm in Brazil. It's unbelievable. From a small group of people that felt um, disempowered, workers too feeling disempowered. Um, all this evolved out of a small group that stuck together. We always work together in a collective to develop it. We, we've, over time, we've developed different tools. We also have a research team. We have different researchers who follow the process. So um, I've been very lucky 
Uh, I wish YAM existed when I needed it, but then YAM exists now for other people. And I'm really impressed to see how it's being developed in, in Brazil. So um, YAM, YAM it's as many things as there are people because it's a very unique experience. It could be for someone just having somebody to talk freely about the medication. Uh, it's having answers about what you're taking. It can also be about having alternatives. Maybe you're sleeping too much because you're taking medication that are very strong, sedatives. Maybe you want to go back to school, go back to work, and it's hard for you to get up in the morning. So if you have less medication, it could, it could help you to uh, get up in the morning. And so again, in an instance like this, it would be about the person finding, if you have less medication, um, you have to have a support network if you want to reduce. You need to know your medication, and, um, and you need to find alternatives uh, you need to find different ways to cope. Whatever the medication was doing before, uh, you have to find something else. It's a process of having, is, uh, of having a good life. How, how is your life? Uh, the purpose of medication, I think everybody agrees, is to make your life better. Your quality of life should be better. One of the things we do in GAM, we do it in groups, we do it individual follow-up. There's a GAM book in French, English, and in Portuguese. And you look at your life. How is my life today? How, what are my living conditions? Um, what are, how are my relationships? How is my health? How is my mental health? And how, how is, what's medication? How is it impacting these different areas of my life? So you're having a concrete picture of how, what, if, what the medication brings to you. Sometimes when people do this GAM process, if they want to, they're, they're ready, they realize what, what the medication was bringing to them. It's not always negative, the medication. For a lot of people, it's positive. And, uh, but for some people, the medication is doing nothing or making their life worse. So there has to be different alternatives because people have different experiences with medication.